Now to our original series, Project Home. Most of us have that one teacher who changed our lives forever, but these days a lack of affordable housing is pushing educators out of the communities they teach, disconnecting them from their students. And tonight, Susie Steimel introduces us to a teacher trying to make ends meet. Every morning before the sun rises, Megan Kaluza is already up. By 7 a.m., she's on a crowded BART train. Next, she transfers to an SFMTA Muni train, and then she walks uphill both ways to school. So it does feel like a huge chunk of the day, you know, three hours is, yeah, that's a, an eighth of my whole day. She didn't always have to endure this three hour commute. She used to live in San Francisco, but every year. And we got our first notification and it was $200. Like clockwork. And I was like, oh. Her rent in San Francisco went up. So she finally left the community she's worked in for 15 years to become a super commuter. So we got a rent increase notice of $400. And that was kind of like the moment when we knew that we, we, we just had to move. The entire state is facing a teacher shortage, but in the Bay Area, it's especially bad. District-wide, the turnover rate is 21%. Anywhere from 300 to 700 educators leave every single year. In the past five years, the district estimates it's lost 3,000 educators. In my ideal world, my home is near my students' homes, and we live in the same community, and we're, we're real neighbors. When she lived in San Francisco, every once in a while, Megan's students would stop her in the Mission District. Miss Calusa, Miss Calusa, and waving. And I'm like, I'm not sure which one of my kids you are all grown up as you're passing by. But now, because she lives across the bay, she doesn't have time to stay at after school events. And after her commute, she doesn't have time to invest in her new community in Oakland. That's a huge part of the educator life is being a part of that school community. So, I mean, that's suffering greatly. The district has steadily increased salaries to try to keep its teachers. Back in 2016, the average teacher made $62,000 a year. Now the average salary is $83,000. But in San Francisco, that still means they're low income. Low income in San Francisco for one person means making less than $90,450 a year. So housing instability for educators uh, is now very quickly rising to, you know, kind of, a, if you will, a crisis level. Peter Cohen is the co-director of Council of Community Housing Organizations, a nonprofit that advocates on behalf of SFUSD's educators. His organization released a study this fall entitled, Who Will Teach Our Children? Folks are realizing that a teacher who's struggling with their housing is not going to be as good at their job. The study highlights how most teachers cannot afford to rent here. At $83,000 a year, affording rent means paying less than $2,075 a month in a city where the average one bedroom goes for more than $3,700. It really enriches uh, kids' educational experience when they have a connection to a teacher who's kind of there with them as they, as they develop, you know? And that doesn't just come automatically or free those teachers have to be respected and protected. Low income in black communities, particularly the Bayview schools, are being hit the hardest. At Willie Brown Middle School, 76% of students are socioeconomically disadvantaged. 37% of students at that school are black compared to 8% district wide. By year three, turnover rate is at 47%. That's more than double the district average. In addition to raising salaries, the district is now adding teacher housing. 100 teachers will be allowed to live here at Francis Scott Key Elementary School. The $44 million project is one of many teacher housing solutions being built on district property. I want to believe that, you know, it's something I think we all want to believe is that there's a place for us here and it's going to work out, you know, our wages are somehow going to keep pace with the, the housing that's available to us. For more than a decade, thousands of teachers have learned the hard way that they can't afford this place. That's what Megan's commuting all these miles for, desperately trying to avoid becoming this district's next dropout. This is, you know, the city I love and the community I love. And to think that I'm being pushed out against my will is, it's been really hard. I love this place. 
I love coming to work every day. I love going into schools and seeing kids. And to think that someday I can't do it, it's a very difficult reality to live in every day. So there is a ballot measure on San Francisco's November ballot that would change some zoning restrictions and increase opportunities for affordable housing and educator housing projects. That is Proposition E. There is some debate over how much that will actually do, but that is the subject of yet another Project Home Story. We've got that coming up in the next couple of weeks. So Susie, from the research that you're able to conduct, what did you find? When do teachers leave? Is it, is it in their first year? A lot leave in their first year, but mm -hmm. most of the research that we saw showed that they tried to hang on uh, for two or three years and that usually by year two or year three that's when there was sort of a big drop and people weren't able to stay past that amount of time. Yeah, educators in the Bay Area. And, and the sobering truth is it's not just teachers. Oh, it's I, I wanted to say that, yeah. And, uh, you know, other it's everybody. Workers. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Live here. It's a yeah. lot of people who would love to live in the city because they work here. Yeah. But can't afford to. Susie, thank tough. you. All right, Susie, thanks. Now remember to keep sending your ideas and stories to Project Home at CBS.com, and you can see all of Susie's reporting on our website, KPIX.com.